What's up everybody, I'm Burt Wagner, and today we're going to run some performance tests on the new SQL Server 2016 JSON functions. In the past, I've written quite a bit about JSON performance inside SQL Server. The overall verdict was, it's really good. I use it all the time and there's a lot of situations where I recommend you know people should start using it. With that said some of the performance tests that I've done uh, regarding the new JSON functionality in the past maybe weren't designed as well as they should be. I think in some of my previous performance tests I unfairly compared how well the SQL Server JSON functions work compared to their XML equivalents and their JSON.NET equivalents in C Sharp. So performance testing in SQL is already hard enough, right? Um, but at least when you're comparing different queries within SQL Server or different functions within SQL Server, at least your environment stays consistent, right? Like you're not having to deal with network issues, read and write speeds are going to be consistent, right? The way SQL's reading pages for one table is going to be the same speed that SQL's reading those pages for another table. There's no differences there. When we do a performance test where we're comparing SQL Server to something like C Sharp, you know, the game totally changes. Now our read and write speeds from disk, they're not being done the same way. They're probably going to be different. Uh, how results get brought back and displayed, whether they're being displayed on screen or whether they're just being stored in memory, right? That adds some differences too. So today I want to take a look at five instances where I think JSON in SQL sh Server should actually perform better than I originally thought. So let's dive in and take a look at some of these examples. In this first test that we're going to look at, I'm going to want to deserialize about 20,000 elements of car year make model data. Um, so I have that data in a string already, in a JSON string, and I want to see how fast SQL Server can break that up into individual rows and values versus how much how fast json.net in c sharp can do that json.net is kind of the standard for serializing deserializing json in uh, the dotnet world so that's why i'm choosing to use that library to compare against today so in this first test we're going to parse all of our json car elements into a result set using the open json function so if i run that test we can kind of see that it runs there we go, that's the result we get. Instead of having a JSON string of data, it's now converted it to a table. Um, and in the messages section, we have the timings. Um, I'm running some screen capturing software here, so we're gonna base my times off when I ran this before I was recording this YouTube video. Um, so that query took about 160 milliseconds, and the thing to be aware of here is I'm selecting all three columns of data, and all those columns of data are being brought back to the screen, right? So there's some overhead there in my C sharp test that we'll see in a minute there's no easy way to right, bring those results back to the screen how would I do it? Do I do it via a data table or a bunch of lists? Do I create some form to display that data? All right, there's no real equivalent of how do we display that data after deserializing it in .NET versus in SQL Server Management Studio where we have the GUI and the result set is displayed at the bottom so to get around that a little bit, and this still isn't perfect, um, what I want to do here is instead of selecting the year, make, and model columns, we could just do a select count. Um, if we take a look at the execution plans for where we have this query with the count and compare it against the query that's selecting the year, make, and model, we will see, let me make this a little bit bigger, right? So don't mind this, this first query up top here. It's just selecting our data into our variable. Um, this first query where we're selecting your make and model, all it's doing is our open JSON table valued function and then returning the 19,772 rows back to our select. If we do a count star, we see these two extra steps, which is calculating the number of rows we have there in our result set. But the execution plan is still using the open JSON function and it's still processing those almost 20,000 rows. And so because of that, I think that's a pretty equal comparison. The only difference here is gonna be, even though both queries compare 19,000 rows, this first query is gonna then display those 19,000 rows of data to the screen versus the second query, we're only gonna display one row. Um, so there's no way I could figure out to just display no rows. Um, if you try to use table 
uh, variables, there's some overhead there. So this is kind of the, the cleanest way, just return one row and um, that should remove the majority of overhead from actually displaying the results. Um, if we go back to our query, what we can do then is if we look at the performance of our select count star um, to parse out those 19,772 rows of data, it comes back in 71 milliseconds. So really fast. In the C sharp world, if we jump over to that, we'll see I set up the test right here. And um, all we're doing is we're using JSON.NET's JSON convert uh, deserialize object method here to take that string of data which is now in memory, um, which is what we did the same thing in SQL, and um, deserialize it into a collection of car objects. So as equivalent as we're going to get, and that took 66 milliseconds. So SQL 71 milliseconds versus 66 milliseconds for JSON.NET in C Sharp. Um, JSON.NET still wins, uh, but I think SQL Server is very competitive. And who knows, maybe if I ran this you know, 50 more times, we'd see instances where SQL Server is actually faster. Um, but overall, I look at them as equals. So in SQL, if we now run our second test here, which is deserializing those roughly 20,000 JSON elements and filtering it on where the model value in those elements is golf, um, that query takes about 58 milliseconds in SQL Server. If we go ahead and jump back over to our C Sharp code, here's the test there. Um, we're using the JSON.NET, JSON convert dot deserialize object method, and that's doing the same thing. It's deserializing all our JSON data and then filtering it on our VW Golf model. And we see that that took only 52 milliseconds. So JSON.NET, once again, beats out SQL Server, but it's barely, right? I don't know if any of this stuff is statistically significant. Um, I didn't run this enough times to know, but in my mind, both SQL Server and JSON.NET are equally as fast for deserializing data, um, at least how in these tests show. So for our third test, which I have labeled test four here, don't mind that, we are taking all of our JSON data and basically doing the opposite. We're creating our JSON string from a result set of about 20,000 rows or 20,000 objects in C Sharp. Um, so to do that, we're going to just do our select star from DBO cars query here with the for JSON auto function. That will automatically convert it into a JSON object. Uh, the key thing here is SQL Server reads its data either from disk. Uh, physical disk when it's reading pages for the first time or if that data is already in the buffer right it's reading it from memory um, so to kind of account for that we're gonna run this DBCC drop clean buffers don't ever do this in a production system um, but in a development system basically that'll get rid of any in-memory data that we have cached uh, so for this test then when we run it and obviously we're not gonna get 108 milliseconds now it'll probably be slower but I got 108 milliseconds on this earlier today when we forced the query to read the data from disk. Um, in C Sharp, to do the same thing, we um, the closest thing I could get is using this file.readAllText method. So I took all the JSON data, stored it into a file on my hard drive, um, and we're first reading it from disk into memory um, before we go ahead and serialize it. Once again, it's not a perfect test because the way SQL Server reads data from disk is probably not the same way that C Sharp reads data from disk. Um, there's probably more things going on, so this is kind of as close as we could get. This is a very rough test. Um, but in comparison, where SQL Server was able to do it in 108 milliseconds, JSON.NET gets it in 63 milliseconds. So either this test is still poorly written, um, I, I think it's close enough, um, or in this case JSON.NET is just faster at serializing that data into a JSON object. Right, and this test isn't perfect not only for the reading data from disk reasons, but we are still having to display this whole JSON string into the results window if we're using Management Studio in C Sharp, I mean, we can output it to a console window, but it's just, it's not really the same amount of work the computer's having to do. So um, even though in this case, JSON.NET looks to be about twice as fast, uh, I think personally it's probably closer and it's just very hard to get the exact number there. Um, but still, regardless, 
SQL Server does a really great job at parsing that data. Sorry, SQL Server does a really great job at taking all those rows of data and transforming them into a JSON object. So next, I want to take a look at a couple of XML scenarios. Um, in the past, when I've written about XML versus JSON performance comparisons, right? which one should you use? Should you use the legacy XML in SQL Server, or should you use JSON going forward? Um, JSON came out as the winner, but I forgot to kind of think about all the scenarios of where JSON is even better than XML. Um, I didn't really consider how SQL Server interacts with an application, right? And when you take that into consideration, as we will for these next two tests, JSON is even better for um, using in SQL Server instead of XML. Um, my previous tests already showed it's faster than XML in most cases, but as you'll see now, uh, it just blows XML performance out of the water. So I actually did these tests in .NET only. We'll scroll up here. And this first test, what we're doing is serializing our, uh, our data into XML format and into JSON format. Uh, the reason for this is, right, anytime you're working in an application, you need to send that data to SQL Server. You're probably going to serialize that data into XML first, so then you can insert it into your XML column in SQL Server. So you can just send over one column of data. Um, I'm going to do the same comparison in JSON. And, right, so this first part is really a comparison between the XML serializer in .NET and the JSON.NET serializer. Um, and the JSON.NET serializer destroys the XML serializer, right? It's more than twice as fast. It's 69 milliseconds to serialize those 20,000 car uh, elements versus 166 seconds milliseconds for the XML data. And the great thing with JSON is a lot of times, especially in web applications, you don't even need to have to serialize your data into JSON. It probably is already in JSON if you're working with JavaScript front ends. So this step is completely optional. Um, but I guess in fairness, I, I did want to include it there to see which one is actually faster to serialize, um, even though most of the time you probably don't even have to serialize your JSON data. Now for the second scenario, is once we have that serialized data, how long does it take to actually transfer over the network, over TCP, to SQL Server from our application? Um, and this is important, right, because the XML data serialized is always going to be bigger than the JSON equivalent, right? XML has a lot of opening and close tags. There's basically duplicate data in there because of those opening and close tags, which JSON doesn't have to deal with. It's, um, the syntax for JSON is just cleaner. The JSON equivalent of your data should always be physically smaller in size. And that stands to reason that it should be faster to transfer that smaller size JSON data to the server. And that's exactly what we see here, right? Um, in this first test here, I'm taking my XML string, basically, and inserting it into, my, uh, into this XML versus JSON table on my SQL server. And that XML string data is 1.88 megabytes in size, and it took 142 milliseconds to write. On the other hand, if we take our JSON string, it's only 1.45 megabytes of data, um, and it took 20 milliseconds to write to the server, right? So this is six, seven times as fast, basically. Um, way faster. And, that, and not only is, it, is that happening, not only is the JSON faster at inserting to SQL Server because it's less data that has to transfer, but the SQL Server doesn't have to do any extra processing of inserting that data into um, an XML type data column. Right? The JSON is just getting written to an NVARCHAR column. It's much faster. It doesn't have to be parsed out like the XML data does. So the JSON writes are way faster. Um, and just for fun, I did one more test here where we took that XML data and inserted it into our NVARCHAR column in our table. So instead of inserting it into an XML data type, we just insert it into a plain and varchar data type. And that took 29 milliseconds, right? So that makes sense. Compared to the JSON, the XML data is a little bit bigger, so it takes you know an extra 9 milliseconds to actually write to the server. And that means that the 130 milliseconds uh, or 110 milliseconds that we saw up here is you know the speed of or how long it takes SQL Server to take that XML data and parse it into the XML data type. So um, definitely some overhead there. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this 
uh, set of performance tests to be useful. Um, I definitely learned this past week of how hard it is to set up equivalent performance tests on uh, using these different functions, especially if you're not just in one environment like SQL Server. Um, but overall, right, JSON in SQL Server is a fantastic uh, new capability. Uh, I use it all the time, and these performance tests just kind of back it up that it is very competitive compared to other languages um, in terms of being able to manipulate JSON data. So. Um, don't be scared of using it. I think it's been tested out. It's proven that, that it works well, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe below, and I will see you next week. Thanks.